I'd um, like now to introduce Colin Dun Dunkley, who is going to uh, talk to us about the um, uh, Epilepsy 12 update. Um, as you all know, I'm very passionate about the use of data in terms of uh, informing everything that we do in quality improvement. And the Epilepsy 12 team uh, continue to um, uh, support the whole world of paediatric epilepsy in, in the UK with, um, with great quality data. So over to you, Colin. Thanks, Richard. Wow, what a, a great start. Thanks so much to uh, the young, young people. Um, I don't quite know how to um, f follow that. And, and I, I bet um, you're wishing that um, Epilepsy 12 data could come in through Menti and you get the immediacy of seeing your results um, there and then. We're, we're not quite as um, nifty and agile as that um, yet, but we're, we're, we're trying to head in that um, direction. I've got um, a few minutes um, with you to give um, a heads up as to um, where we're at with Epilepsy 12, uh, some of our latest data and, and uh, what to expect um, over the next uh, year, or, year or so. Um, and I'm hoping you'll see some some themes through this um, presentation and also get a feel that we're beginning to not so much just think about structures of uh, care and the, the numbers and statistics of, of care, but um, moving that towards stories, stories of improvement, stories of issues and streams where we're, we're connecting, we're networking, we're getting improvement streams. So hopefully you'll see that as a, a thread through through my presentation. Um, this is the, the the long view, if you like, um, about where, where we're at now. So I'm gonna show you the data from our our latest um, rounds, which is cohort three from round um, three. And we um, published uh, this um, a few months months ago, and it's based on um, data that was collected from children who were having their first pediatric assessment um, in this time period here, so right in the, the heart of COVID, um, and then looks at what happens for the 12 months after, after then, um, with a sort of closing date of, of the end of 2021, and that's also when we when we took the snapshot of the organisational um, audit. So this is the third cohort from uh, round um, round um, three. Um, so these are the the dates in question. If 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 you remember the organisational audit, uh, it takes like a census um, and is completed by Epilepsy 12 leads, and then the clinical audit is derived. Um, from all the children with uh, epilepsy presenting during a 12 month period for that particular um, trust. Um, and then we um, collect that uh, data and it turns into the, the different types of information sets you see. Um, and we continue to really appreciate the, the high levels of engagement from trusts and health boards across England, Wales. So um, four fifths uh, participating in the organisational audit and uh, three quarters in the clinical order. This has stayed really stable through COVID, so we're appreciative um, uh, of that. Obviously, we're keen to get it higher, but um, this is this is really uh, good. And just for your interest, it only takes about 20 minutes uh, for a team to input the organisational audit. So this element is is, is quite uh, quite quick. Um, and we now at a position within round three where we've had data entered for over 36,000 um, uh, children. Um, by the time you strip this down to the particular cohort in question and those with epilepsy, it's a, a smaller number, but we're, we're pulling from a large um, cohort here. So um, we had uh, data completed for over 5,000 for this um, cohort, um, and that was just less than 2,000 um, children with uh, epilepsy. Uh, we, we can see what's going on with. Um, and this is a slide giving you a feel for um, how easy trusts and health boards find it to fully submit their data. So you can see um, a lot of trusts are managing to get all their clinical uh, data in for their children, but some um, are struggling and only getting some of the children in and then not managing to, some are not managing to get any uh, in, a, in at all. So we're, we're trying to help um, close this this gap and make it easier to do full uh, submission over over time. What's nice to see is over the years, um, the the demographics of the children we're, we're, we're capturing has 
remained fairly stable actually. Um, so the, this is a graph showing the different age groups um, with the different audits from round one in pink um, to uh, cohort three round three in, in gray. Um, and you can see uh, that from audit to audit, um, the proportion within each age group is fairly consistent. There's been a slight drop off um, in the older uh, young people uh, this round, which I'm not sure about, but other than that, it's been fairly stable. And what's nice about seeing stable demographics is it then gives you confidence when you start looking at quality data, you can begin to see changing quality and, and begin to think that is real uh, change because the, the, the cohorts seem to be fairly consistent. These are the um, children with epilepsy in uh, in the audit um, with uh, the different age in years and then females shown in um, pinkish color and males shown in bluish um, color. And we, we continue to see this sort of pattern with, with lots of uh, infants um, and a slight male uh, preponderance. And we've been interested in uh, deprivation uh, this shows uh, the, the deprivation um, indices over the, the three rounds, and you can see that remains stable. Um, and there's a, a higher representation of deprivation in, in the children and young people we're providing care for. This will give you a feel where the um, children and young people are, are coming from into um, paediatrics. And it's not surprising, it's mainly from emergency departments and general practice. Um, uh, but they come from other places as well. And Gray again shows um, the, the last cohort. And there maybe is a, a COVID effect here, I'm not sure, but you can see in this latest round, more children have been coming into the paediatric service from an ED uh, base rather than um, gen general practice. These are our headline uh, results, um, and hopefully you'll be familiar with this type of uh, representation, but it takes a little while to, to get your head uh, around it. Um, these are all the 12 performance indicators. Um, Gray is the cohort three from this latest round, and then the previous rounds are in light blue and dark blue, and each performance indicator is scored out of um, 100%, um, and then the whiskers show the 95% uh, confidence interval for that um, um, score. Um, and just to draw your eye to the things that have changed, um, the, these are areas where we can see statistically significant um, change. So we've had improvements in um, the complex children having tertiary involvement, um, seizure formulations, um, and care planning, both in terms of content and agreement. So they've all shown statistical improvement. There's been a slight drop in access to paediatricians with ex expertise. The uh, other areas remain um, in need of change, but have been um, uh, stable. And I think this is what um, good looks like. So this is accuracy of diagnosis, which is our proxy for um, misdiagnosis. Um, and each trust or health board is a vertical um, bar. And you can see hardly any children are having their diagnosis of epilepsy withdrawal. Some some trusts this is happening, but in the in the main, um, this is going really well and is almost a uh, hundred percent. Um, in contrast, we're still struggling with this um, element of care. So you can see that still there's a lot of children with epilepsy who are not benefiting from. Um, uh, specialist nurse input from an epilepsy nurse. This was 2021. This is 2022, so no um, real change. Uh, and about a quarter of children are still not having this uh, vital access. And, and then just to draw out some interesting um, findings uh, from this round that you, you might be interested in and, and, and sort of lean into what we're going to talk about later. So um, this is about children with epilepsy having SUDEP um, information, and it shows the, the percentage in green who've got SUDEP information from cohort one, cohort two, cohort three, and there's been a slight um, increase, uh, but it remains um, that half of children are not having evidenced um, SUDEP information. And what's more striking is when you see this, um, uh, the variation across regions around this. So this is 
um, each um, of the Open UK uh, regions with their SUDEP um, score across the three um, audits. And um, there's a lot of difference from region to region. So some um, are achieving this in 89% of their children and young people, whereas others 29% um, so we need to have a, a think about why there's this uh, variation and learn from those who are doing it um, well. Mental health um, is uh, really um, close to our hearts and we need to do uh, better. Um, our audit data from this year shows that uh, one in 20 children uh, and young people over the age of five have got a um, confirmed mental health problem. We think it should be around um, 30%. So we're not seeing the mental health diagnoses um, in a large number of, uh, of children. And then this is an interesting one around variation as well in terms of rescue um, medication. So again, this is um, looking at the proportion of children with epilepsy who get rescue uh, medication. And overall 22% um, of children are getting rescue medication for England and Wales. But what's interesting is how much variation there is from uh, region to region. So in some, almost half the children are, whereas in other regions, it's down to 7%. So it'd be interesting to try and think why this uh, might, might be, because you'd expect it to be much more um, consistent than that. So these are a few things to show what we've achieved. Um, you've told us live, loud and clear that data entry is really difficult and time consuming. And if you've gone into the platform recently, you'll see that there's been substantial change to the, um, the data set. We've removed the first assessment form. We've got rid of loads of um, fields and we've removed this trust profile. And we're already seeing uh, the benefits of that uh, in terms of people putting in their, their, their data uh, earlier in the audit. So thank you for that. We hope you find it easier and quicker. We've still got a way to go, uh, but we're, we're, we're trying to make it speedier for you. Um, you'll have received um, clinic facing posters. So this is the same data you get in your trust reports, but presented for a patient, young person facing view in, in clinic. And then um, you've just seen the um, young person and parent guide, um, which hopefully will empower young people to understand the audit and what's showing and telling us, but also what good uh, looks like um, for them. Um, so you can see that not only have we got um, a timeline that's um, ex extending forwards and, and now going another three years into round four, but the breadth of reporting output is um, increasing uh, as well. We've started producing NHS England regional data packs. Um, you should get the trust reports, which shows your trust and health board results in detail, and then these other elements as well. And then this year we're, is the first year we're um, reporting out, outliers for specialist nurse provision and tertiary provision. So new um, things to expect coming forwards. So we're going to move the methodology to an epilepsy only um, uh, capture, which should reduce the number of children we need to register. Uh, we've not done this yet, but we're moving in this direction. Um, we're going to capture ethnicity uh, within our demographics and begin to look for variation in, in this area. Um, we're going to reduce our performance indicators down to 10 from 12. And we're going to remove accuracy of diagnosis and first paediatric assessment from our performance indicators. Um, these ones are going to change a little bit. So we're going to combine care planning uh, content agreement into a single um, performance indicator. These are going to be challenging. We're going to add timeliness into paediatrician with expertise and MRI in line with um, recent um, NICE guidance. Um, and then for the Valprate um, uh, group for the females 12 years and over, we're going to look for formal evidence of the PREVENT um, programme uh, for them. Um, we're going to uh, require appropriate care planning content, content to now include SUDEP up in the mix. And we're going to widen our data set around mental health. So we're going to um, look for evidence of mental health inquiry or screening for children five years and over. And for those with an identified issue, look for evidence of um, support. Um, and this is uh, in direct response to um, what we've been hearing 
from the young people about unmet unmet need. Our reporting is going to change. So at the moment, we produce a, a yearly big report, and we're going to move to a small ten-page uh, report. Um, and also, we're being challenged by HQIP um, uh, our funders to move to a, a monthly reporting uh, schedule, um, and we're just working out the details of how we're going to uh, do that. So you're going to see smaller, more frequent um, reporting. There's loads of touch points around um, epilepsy, so loads of people and players. Um, um, and joining them up um, is um, tricky um, and we're hoping to get more functional uh, networks growing up around um, these players um, and the um, the joining in of NHS England and uh, regional uh, groupings um, is, is certainly going to help um, this this um, connections. So I'm hoping um, that we get um, connections uh, between all the different um, levels um, and that these connections both have motor and sensory um, um, functions and that we think if you if you're following the, the nervous system analogy um, the, the the child becomes the the central uh, part of the, the the nervous system. So there's all sorts of connections we need to make um, uh, functioning in in this complex uh, network to serve serve the child and their future. So a little bit of planning, and then um, I'll close. So there's ongoing work around the uh, data set. Uh, last year, I mentioned that we're doing some work to try and make the the data flow across the NHS landscape, and this is moving along um, nicely. So we've begun work to make. Um, the Epilepsy 12 data set um, uh, fit to connect uh, through our API project. We've begun to think how we can begin to um, co-create an open source core data set for the whole NHS for epilepsy. And um, trusts are beginning to um, have a go with personal health care records. So vCreate Neuro is an example of this. Um, ourselves at Sherwood and Luton and Dunstable and also Young Epilepsy um, are getting started with um, a patient knows best um, uh, health um, record, which is all about connecting data around the child to this landscape. So watch this space around this um, data flow automation. And then finally, it's, it's, it's quite easy to get lost in, in, all, in all this and um, um, you know, struggle with your day-to-day -day work and struggle to get the data in. Um, but I'm hoping that when you see, um, see what comes out of it, it, it feeds and motivates um, us. So this is me just showing how this all feels for, for me um, as part of my team at Sherwood Forest Hospital. So we're struggling at the moment with um, adult transition and lack of adult epilepsy specialist nurses. Um, we've um, also struggling with rates of tertiary um, uh, referral. Um, our stories at the moment are around um, trying to improve our care plan um, agreements reliably going to all our children and parents. Um, and we've been using this NHS app to improve our information um, prescription and, and find an easier way to see video from children so we can um, begin care earlier um, for them. And then, then our streams are increasingly about connecting to a wider group of bodies at um, regional level or ICS level or national um, levels. So I'd encourage you to have a go at thinking about what your um, stories and streams and issues are for your for your teams uh, as, a, as a way of resolving um, the, the complexity of all these things that are going going on to, and to try and simplify uh, things so dig dig into your data know um, your structures your stats your stories um, and your streams and um, loads of things can be improved straight off um, with no resource or funding but a lot of things need help so feel connected but know who to tell your stories to to help those areas where you need uh, help and um, empower children and young people you can feel their power um, uh, from today so imp empower them to live their best life journeys not patient journeys but life journeys and help them be the um, 
the influencers so that we're hearing their stories um, and their, their streams as well. So there's, there's loads of people to thank in the in the project board, in the project team, um, in the methodology group, and and then others and stakeholders. So um, many many thanks to um, so so many people and all of you um, taking uh, part. Um, particular thanks just for today. I'd like to thank Helen Stacy who's leaving us as our project manager. She's carried a lot of the project through. Um, uh, the last two or three year, years, which has been really tricky, but has um, kept us going and not only that, um, grown the uh, order and its capability. So so many thanks to Helen and, and everyone else uh, as well. And uh, any stage, give us a shout if you're struggling or you're, you're enjoying the audit and you want to tell us um, or want to know more or find out stuff, don't um, hold back, get in touch and, and we'll do our best to get you, get you on track. Um, uh, many thanks. Thank you so much, Colin. Um, I, I, I think it's always it always provokes such helpful thoughts um, when when we we look at data and, and what um, uh, epilepsy twelve is able to furnish us with. Um, when, when you showed the slide about how you're going to be introducing the um, the two week element into seeing a pediatrician with expertise, then all of a sudden I was carried off with thoughts about okay, so who um, I need to talk to someone at my operations team about this. I need to talk to my team. How am I going to manage my slots in clinic? How are we going to be able to deliver this and and it's using the data as that kind of lever to um to 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 make sure that we embed the change that nice guidance for example um mandates that we must do um it's really helpful that it drives those conversations so um thank you very much for everything that the whole epilepsy 12 team um uh, does for us um we've got uh, time for one quick question um uh, so just looking through the list here there's a question um does epilepsy 12 seek feedback from positive outliers regarding sharing good practice um so uh, yeah but yes yeah i mean we, we we we're always looking for evidence of improvement um and the equip program um is one example of ways we we sort of motivate and capture um, improvement. We put case studies in our reports where the stories we hear about. Um, so any any improvement we hear about, there's usually a platform or a place where we can um, celebrate that, but it's in no one particular place, but there's loads of um, outputs um, for that. Yeah, and we do try and capture positive outliers as well as negative outliers. So outlier process is a, is a tricky type of thing that we're beginning to explore now, but that will capture people who are doing things well as, as well as um, negative uh, outliers. Um, there's, there's loads of examples of um, uh, success and then the community of epilepsy like this um, we can we can hopefully learn uh, and embed uh, what other people are doing well into our own our own um, practice. That's, That's a good, good question. Well, um, uh, thank you very much, Colin. Um, we're now going to go into a short break. Um, uh, so you can um, just leave your um, browser where it is um, and head off to make yourselves a, uh, a, a lovely beverage of your choice. Um, we will be back uh, for two o'clock to start the next session. Um, uh, so um, we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. <laughs>